energy, what is it? Energy, when you boil it down to its bare bones, it is a mathematical concept or idea that allows you to predict what is physically possible. Energy is not something that you can hold in your hand because ultimately it is a number. It is an incredibly important number, but it is a number nevertheless. Now there are people in several physics institutes that are saying that the way that we teach and learn energy has been wrong and that there is a better way of doing it. Since I've been teaching energy, we've said that energy can be transformed from one type of energy to another. What types of energy did we have? Kinetic, sound, light, and electromagnetic radiation, thermal, elastic potential, gravitational potential, nuclear, chemical, and electrical. Now, this is the way that I've always taught it in year seven, because I found that it is an easy way for year sevens to conceptualize this idea of energy, which as we know is just a number, even though we haven't actually put a number to it yet. It's easy for students to understand that kinetic is just movement, so things can have kinetic energy. Sound energy, I make it clear that sound energy is just another form of kinetic energy, it's just that the particles are vibrating, not moving from A to B. The kinetic energy is passed from one to another. Light energy. Again, we don't really come across EM until year nine, so light does the job. Thermal energy. Okay, you might call this heat, but heat is the transfer of thermal energy, so we're trying to stick to thermal energy. Again, similar to kinetic because it's because particles are vibrating. Elastic potential, things that are stretched and ready to compress or vice versa. Gravitational potential, things that are high have this. Nuclear, very important one, but not something that we put a number to until A-level physics. Chemical, the fact that when a chemical reaction happens, energy is released or taken in by the reaction, and electrical, the fact that electrons can have energy. Now, when I teach this to my year sevens, I make it clear that objects can have these different types of energy to greater or lesser degrees. A ball can have kinetic energy if it's moving. Air particles can have sound energy. Light travels from A to B, so therefore there must be something carrying energy from, say, a light bulb to your eyes. Thermal energy, objects that have a higher temperature can have more thermal energy. A spring can have elastic potential energy. A skydiver ready to jump out of a plane has more gravitational potential energy than they do when they reach the ground. Nuclear fuels have nuclear energy in, which is ultimately then turned into thermal energy. Chemical energy, fuels have this, and so this again is turned into thermal energy and maybe light and EM as well when it is burnt. Food as well, similar idea. And electrical. It's standard to make it clear that it's the electrons that have the energy in an electrical circuit. They carry the energy around the circuit. But there has been a shift because some people have decided that this is no longer good enough. The new way of talking about energy is in terms of stores and pathways. Stores of energy and pathways by which energy is transferred from one object to another. You are no longer allowed to say type or kind of energy. They say that there are no types or kinds, there is only energy. So we have our stores of energy, we have kinetic, we have thermal, so far so good. Elastic, no longer called elastic potential energy. Vibration, chemical. Nuclear, gravity, no longer gravitational, gravitational potential, gravity energy. And electric, magnetic. Then we have our pathways. We have mechanical working, electrical working. We have heating by particles. And we have heating by radiation. So why are we not allowed to say type or kind anymore? Well, it's because they say that when you use the words type and kind, that somehow stops people from understanding that energy is energy. That somehow it stops them from understanding that kinetic can be turned into thermal, thermal can be turned 
into light. This is my first gripe with this new way of doing things. Because energy is a concept and it's a number, that means that we have to be able to calculate it. We can't measure it directly. So how do we measure kinetic energy? Well, we know that it's half mv squared. If you measure the mass and velocity of an object, you know it's kinetic energy. Sound, similar idea if you know the velocity of the particles. Light, we know that light acts as waves, but we also know that they are in quanta, little packets of energy. And that is equal to hf. That's not something that we go into until A level though, but it is true. Thermal energy, we know that we can calculate that with mc delta t, or rather we can figure out heating from that, can't we? Elastic potential, we know that that is half kx squared. Gravitation potential, E equals mgh. Nuclear, well effectively, E equals mc squared. Chemical, well you can figure out using bond energies, how much energy you have. And finally electrical, well we know that E equals qv, that is the charge of a particle times the potential that it experiences. The point is that all of these directly or indirectly can have a number associated with them, but they are all calculated with a different equation. Therefore, if energy is a number, but we can calculate it through different ways, then there have to be different types of energy. Whether you think that energy is energy or not, the fact that there are different equations to calculate energy, we cannot say that we can get rid of the words type or kind. If we're using these types of energy or these stores of energy, the point is, is that there are different types of stores of energy. Like I said, because they are calculated by a different means. When a person from a physics institute came to my school to do a presentation on this, they said that there are only stores and pathways, but then kept on saying type of store. And when I pointed that out to them, that person effectively said, well, yes, I guess there are different types or kinds of stores of energy. Getting rid of this language here is not only unnecessary, if you ask me, it actively hinders pupils from understanding what energy is. I tried to teach it this new way for the first time to my year sevens a few weeks ago, using this idea of stores and pathways, and I can tell you for a fact that it did not work. My pupils were not clear on what this was all about, how we can have pathways and stores, because this is a difficult concept to get, and it does not further people's understanding in any way compared to this. Let's have a look at a simple example of a light bulb. So here is my light bulb. Now if I did things the old way, then if this light bulb is part of a circuit, then I would say electrical energy goes in and out comes light energy and heat or thermal. Now why is this an easy thing to understand? And why is the pathways thing unnecessary? Well, it's because there is something going in to the light bulb that is carrying energy. What is it? It's the electrons. What about light energy? Well, we can say that the photons have the light energy, but for year seven, I can just say the light has it. And what about heat and thermal energy? Well, generally we say that heat, thermal energy is lost to surroundings. Nice and easy. If this was a motor, then we can say electrical energy goes in, the electrons have the energy, they have that store of energy, if you will, and it gets turned into light energy, and that is ultimately photons, and then we have heat as well. Ultimately, what do you want to get to? Now, this is an idea that's very simple in year seven, but when you get to A level, you need to calculate the energies associated with it. That is the point of energy. If the end point isn't doing a calculation in A level or GCSE, then there is no point. This is the whole point of energy. The energy that the electrons have is equal to QV or EV, charge of electrons times the voltage or the potential difference as they pass through the light bulb. We have HF afterwards. Now you might not use HF, you might use something else, but the point is, is that it can be, can be calculated by E equals HF. And heat and thermal energy, that might be given by MC delta T. That's the old way of doing things. We looked at the new way of doing things, gets a little bit complicated. Now what are we going to say? Well, if this is in a circuit with a battery, if we're talking about energy transfers, except we can't even use the word transfers anymore, it has to be a shift in energy, 
that's the terminology they want to use, then we can no longer say that electrical energy goes in because electrical energy is a pathway. What do we have to say? Well, ultimately, it's chemical energy from the cell. And what do we say? Well, it's an electrical pathway that brings the energy from the cell to the light bulb. Then what? Can we say that light energy comes out? No, we can't. We have to say heating by radiation and particles because we have both going on. And technically, this is EM. And where does that energy go to ultimately? Well, it goes to the surroundings. What type of energy is it going to be ultimately? Well, in the end, everything turns into thermal. If this is a power pack, not a battery, then we'd have to start even further back. We'd have to start from where the electrical pathway started. And that would be the power station. And where does the electrical energy come from in a power station? Well, it comes ultimately from the kinetic energy from the steam. And maybe I'll have to go back even further as well to the chemical energy in the fuel, or the nuclear energy. And herein lies the problem with this new way of looking at things. Where do you stop? If you're talking about stores of energy, then you can't just talk about a single device like this converting one energy into another energy. In essence, you're taking the focus away from the device itself. When I led my pupils through this the other day, and then I gave them this model instead, I asked them which one they preferred, and every single one of them said they preferred this concept up here. They said it was much easier to understand. This down here, was impossibly complicated to understand, especially for year sevens. GCSE and A-level students might be able to understand it, but it does not further their understanding at all, when ultimately you want them to be able to do calculations. Now, going back to this, the justification they give for using this idea of pathways is that these four things here cannot be measured directly. Electrical working cannot be measured directly. You have to measure it using, using the idea of power and then you have to go backwards to find the energy. But my argument is that it is no different to any of these either. Energy is not measured directly. It is always, always calculated. So whether you are calculating energy via these equations or you're using power, you are doing effectively the same thing. And so if you ask me, this is absolute nonsense. So let's have a think about an A-level example of energy. Let's think about annihilation, where we have two particles coming in they collide and two photons are produced. What can we say using the old way of doing things? What energy is involved here? Well, we know that kinetic energy is going in because the positron and the electron have kinetic energy. And we can say that mass energy is going in as well. Incidentally, that's not something that is in the list and it doesn't need to be because it's not something that turns up until A level. Kinetic energy and mass energy in. What type of energy out? Well, it's EM energy out. What equations do we have to allow us to calculate what these things are? Kinetic energy is half mv squared. Mass energy is mc squared. Em energy out is E equals hf. If energy is a concept and a number that allows us to predict things, the kind of question involved here would go something like this. Here's a kinetic energy of an electron and a positron. Calculate what the frequency emitted photons are going to be. We don't see anything about pathways. We don't see anything about, oh, this is just EM radiation. We can't assign an energy to that because it's a pathway, it's not a store. So we can't think about E equals HF because we're just concerned about where the photons end up. It doesn't work that way. So why on earth are we then training year sevens to think in a way that we do not think like when it comes to GCSE and A-level physics? And this is my biggest complaint. Ultimately, the only thing that matters when it comes to energy is the numbers. And so whatever language you use ultimately does not matter. If someone uses completely the wrong terminology and yet is able to predict a number, say the frequency in this situation, then they understand energy. Energy is one of the most fundamental concepts that you come across in physics. I always make sure that pupils are able to understand it in a way that allows them to be able to use it mathematically later on at GCSE and A-level. Whether pupils understand energy or not is not to do with the terminology used. It is to do with the quality of teaching. And the vast majority of teachers I know are able to use the old system and produce some very good physicists using this. 
This, with all the evidence from my lessons and people I've talked to, this is not a good way of teaching energy. And so the question is, why has it been developed? That person that came to my school, I asked them why we need to do away with the terms type and kind, and she said to me, if you ask me, I would probably agree with you but it's somebody higher up who has decided that this is the new way of doing things. And this is the problem. You have somebody very high up in these institutes decided that this needs to be changed just because they heard along the grapevine somewhere that year seven pupils weren't able to articulate their understanding of energy very clearly. And you know why that is? Because it is a difficult concept. But just because pupils might not be able to articulate their understanding using words, but it does not mean that they do not understand it and are able to use it to perform calculations and predict what is going to happen in various situations. The problem is that people just go along with it without stopping to say, hang on a second, is this going to work? No. Groupthink is a big problem nowadays, and that's why this way of understanding energy has permeated the education system now. And we need more people to stand up and say, actually, no, this is not good. So that's been my rant. You can probably tell that I'm a little bit mad about it, but that's because being a teacher, I understand how teenagers think when it comes to physics. So what do you think? Do you agree or do you disagree with me? Either way, put it in a comment down below. I'd really be interested to know what you have to say.